Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. Okay, last petition. We're taught to pray, deliver us from evil. Uh, but usually when we pray, we just sort of mean kind of, you know, the, the generic evil, like all, all the stuff that, that hurts, all the stuff I, I don't like, and all the people I don't like too, especially the ones that hurt me. Um, it, when we leave evil so open-ended, it, it kind of puts us in a bad spot because we end up with uh, two diametrically opposed sides that each manage to find a reason to call each other evil and no way to figure out who's right. It leaves us um, open-ended evil with... with the, the chance to find no problem at all with lots of stuff that scripture would call sin because, well, I mean, I don't hate it and it doesn't feel like it hurts me, so um, how bad could it be? So let's start this way. There are, in fact, objective truths. Let's start this way. God is objectively good. God is the embodiment of good. If there is a good, well, it's God and whatever God does is good because well, from his very character, he is good. Well, evil, evil is embodied too. Um, evil is, is in the shape of, well, the evil one. So much so that as Luther approaches this petition in the large catechism, he writes, deliver or preserve us from the evil one or the malicious one. And it looks as if he were speaking of the devil, as though he, Jesus, would comprehend everything in one so that the entire substance of all our prayers directed against our chief enemy. For it is he who hinders among us everything that we pray for. The name or the honor of God, God's kingdom and will, our daily bread, a cheerful good conscience, etc. See, there is an objective evil in this world, uh, Satan, who is diametrically opposed to everything that the good God would will and do and want. Um, it is Satan who wants no one to be saved. It is Satan who works against everything that God wills and teaches us to pray all the way through the Lord's Prayer. There is an embodiment of evil that we pray against, but we pray in the name of an objective good who has overcome him by his death upon the cross. We sort through good and evil in this way, not just in whether or not I like it, whether or not it feels good to me, whether or not it makes people happy. But, well, we, we separate it between that which God would will and that which Satan would will. Because otherwise it gets kind of confusing. After all, the good God would sometimes will and work and call things good that we don't like. It is God, after all, who says, blessed are those who suffer for righteousness' sake. It is God who calls us to take up crosses and follow him because God would actually rather us suffer in this world than be apart from him in the next. Um, it, it is good and evil that aren't necessarily divided among lines of, of pleasure and pain. Otherwise, we would have to say it must have been evil that Christ suffered and hurt to save you from the stuff that you do to each other. And it must be fine after all if it makes you feel good. No, no, we don't divide good and evil between pleasure and pain. We start with objective facts. God wants to save sinners. God wants to save you because God is good and he will work only good for you, even in things that sometimes hurt, even in things that you sometimes might not always like. And well, the devil will work some things that hurt you and some things that you might like quite a bit, but it will always be evil for you. When we keep good and evil in light of, well, the cross of Christ, well, there we can actually see God's goodwill. It is to save sinners, even through suffering, his suffering for you, and even that which you will endure against the evil one. But even in the face of that, we are still taught to pray. Deliver us from evil. Amen.